Hey everyone, welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and a cash or trash? Really? It's, it's actually happening. It's only been a month tomorrow since I did one of these. Uh, I apologize for that. Sometimes life happens. I was gone and then I missed a week because of some family stuff and then I was gone for the conference and then last week I just when I got by the time I got back, I just didn't have the energy to like do it. <laughs> so I apologize. We haven't done one of these in a while. Um, if you're new, we had my man GT Key in here, he was tailgating and he is back. My man Deep House is here. We'll see how many people come back for this. Happy Monday to you. Um, so yeah, so after a, you know, a bit of a hiatus, we are back and gonna get back on track, hopefully. Uh, at least for the foreseeable future in terms of doing these. Um, so yeah, so this is Cash or Trash. If you're new to the channel or new to these videos, uh, every Saturday, for the most part, <laughs> I put out a video where we look back at the hot comics from six months ago and see how they're doing in the market now. Uh, this is the complement to that video. Um, this is where we look at the hot comics of this past week, and we make predictions for what's going to happen to those books six months from now. Uh, should you chase those books? Uh, should you basically ignore them? What do you do here? And hang on, I got to get, I just realized I don't have my little spreadsheet open, so that's not really, um, I know, oh, it is open. It's just hidden. I need to move it over here so I can see it. There we go. I was like, I was going to say, it should be open, but it's not open. There we go. So, yeah. So, now I know what I'm doing in a second. So, how do we make predictions for that six months from now? Well, I don't, I don't predict exact price changes or anything like that. I just put them into categories of what I think, how the books are going to trend. Uh, and those categories are, as always, let's see if we can find our categories. We got our straight cash homie books we think are going to continue to increase in value over the next six months. Don't usually predict much of this. It does happen. Uh, it's not, you know, it is pretty rare. It's usually one book a month or one book a week, maybe, that might actually be straight cash. Um, and for the most part, when we're talking about straight cash, you're talking about books that Long term have value. Long term are probably going to go up in value, but maybe over the six months we're at a peak in that long term trend that kind of varies, and you want to avoid that peak because you'll do better in six months. But three years from now it won't really matter. So it's kind of what we. There's most of the books that we talk about as being street cash, but yeah, we do get about a book a week uh, that is actually street cash. We get our worth it. These are books that are priced about right. If you buy in right now, even though they're hot, you're really not probably going to lose anything. Uh, the book's going to probably hold this value. Uh, so, yeah, you're you're probably in good shape. Uh, we got our I'll Be Back flip side of those worth it. I mean, if you buy in, you're not really going to way overpay. But if you're patient, you'll probably be able to do better. Uh, then we got our traps. These are books that can grow up 30 40 50%. Uh, these are books that just don't have sustainability. Whatever's making them hit the list right now is not really sustainable. They're going for more than what they're going to be worth. If you're just patient, uh, you will do much better. Then, of course, we have our dumpster fires. These are books that are going to drop 60, 70, 80%. And we usually have two to three of these a month uh, or a week, a month. I keep saying a month. <laughs> Apparently, because I'm on the fact that I haven't done this for a month, but I'm all off my game. Um, we usually have a couple of these a week at least. Uh, even so, more of these than we usually have up books uh, that are going to drop. Yeah, more than fifty percent. That just fundamentally do not have anywhere near the value uh, that they're going for right at this moment. That this is really just an unsustainable situation with these current books occasionally we'll throw in a yeah whatever a book that's selling a lot of copies but not really going for very much occasionally we'll talk about a come on man where the just the logic behind why the book is hot doesn't make any sense uh so yeah we that's kind of the categories we kind of throw out there and occasionally we'll throw something else hey terry what's going on dumpster fires forever <laughs> So, yeah, so with that, uh, we got 16 books to talk about this week. So let me get these added here and we will start seeing what we think. Uh, let's see and try my other. Just one. Yeah, nope. Nope. That one. Is that the one that makes me bigger? 
I think this is maybe. Nope. Although that would actually, yeah, you know. I'm messing around here. <laughs> so anyway, we'll go with this. <laughs> so um it's I see that's not right. This is the right, where's the one that I like? I don't know. I feel like I had one that I actually liked. That's the one. There it is. <laughs> it took me. I thought I had one set up where I was a little bigger, but it was still the full screen. <laughs> I apparently don't know how to use StreamYard either. So <laughs> anymore. So there you go. Um, you got. We're off to a flying start today. Um, yeah. So we got. Uh, First up, we have I Heart Skull Crusher number one. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> we won't mess with it no more. <laughs> We're leaving it. We're leaving it. Uh, this is I Heart Skull Crusher number one. Uh, the Al Alisso Zano one per store virgin variant. So apparently this series has a little bit of buzz. Um, I didn't know anything about this. I guess it was on the list also last week. Uh, when I wasn't doing this, and yeah, it's up to twenty to thirty-five dollars for this virgin one per store virgin. When you think about that, though, one per stores usually about a one in twenty-five on indies, maybe a little less than a one in twenty-five um, in terms of the number of printings. So yeah, twenty to thirty-five—that's really not a ton. Um, obviously, this is just the virgin variant of one of the main covers. I don't know if it's the A or the B, like if it's a, the A cover or a variant. Um, but yeah, odds are, hey, Mr. Vaughn, what is going on? I hope you're having a great night as well. For the most part, these indie stuffs are always just come back later. Um, it, may event, it may turn into a trap. More likely, though, if there's enough buzz and people like it enough that, like, it's a good chance that it won't, like, completely collapse. But they usually just don't sustain these initial rush on any kind of indies and variants for these indies unless the series just absolutely takes off but for every something is killing the children there's 50 60 100 uh, other things that get a little buzz and don't do anything long term so i'd be very patient with this uh next we're gonna move into strictly covers and the and this is web of spider-man number one uh the paco medina 125 this hit both lists this week 35 up to 65 on this one, on this one in 25. And I guess this is kind of previewing the next year of Spider Comics is what's going on here in this variant uh, with all the different kind of uh, Spider-Verse uh, versions from the movies, uh, that all the kind of main characters from the movies and other stuff. Uh, getting a little love here. I guess that Pink Way is not because it's the regular comic Jessica Drew Um so, but it is it got Miles and Gwen and Pete and Ben Riley in 2099, and then we got poor Chasm, the other a different version of Ben Riley, it looks like we got in the background. So anyway, this variant getting a little buzz, uh, and the 125, 35, 65. So still setting basically on average right around double ratio. Double ratio usually turns into a book that's going to set between ratio and double. Uh, so if you're buying in at 35, you're probably okay. If you're buying in 65, you're probably a trap. Um, so yeah, if you're on the low end of this, you're probably, eh, I'll be back at worst, maybe worth it if you're on the low end. If you're on the high end, it's probably definitely a trap. Uh, so overall, we're just going to call it an I'll be back because of the kind of fairly wide range still on this one. Um, but yeah, this is one I would be patient on, which is just typical for these. Hey, Jay Carter, cheers. Um, Sure. Of the wall, nice, very nice. Well, she has had this cover for 26, left it right there, all shiny. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you could have maybe flipped it, <laughs> but yeah, you probably won't be probably okay with missing out on this one, I would guess. Uh, next, we have Thrawn Alliances number three, the Declan Shaw, the one in 25, and this one's going for 45 to 60, so. A little tighter range than, but overall the average is basically the same as on that uh, last one. So yeah, this is probably at forty-five to sixty um, because the low end's a little higher. This one probably actually bumps up to a trap for me uh, because Akbar is like it's a trap. Thrawn's in the trap, but anyway, because 
it's probably going to end up being like a $25 to $35 book. And that gets into the trap range of you're paying $45, $50, $60. Um, yeah. So, uh, all right. Next. We're going to keep moving here. These covers, unless you guys got something specific you want to ask about them. Um, yeah, we got a throw. Uh, thra- <laughs> Star Wars Visions, number one. I guess this is a one-shot. Takashi Okazaki, one in 100. So there's only been a couple of Star Wars Visions comics. I guess this is another new one. It's revisiting this as kind of the most popular of the... Uh, this particular character seems to have become the most popular of the ones that came out of that original Star Wars Visions. Uh, little animated shorts that they did by a bunch of different people. Uh, this one in 100 is going for 150 to 190 These other Visions comics really haven't held much value. I mean, it's a cool cover. But unless they really do something with this character and these vision stories going forward, I can't imagine it holding anywhere near this kind of value. I mean, even if it's a $100 book, which is right at ratio in six months, it's a trap. Um, and so, yeah, I would just be, this is another one. I, like, I think the character's cool. Like, I haven't really, but I haven't really been, I really enjoyed that particular vision story, but I haven't been invested in like the comics or going back to it. It was fun. Um, but I don't, I have a hard time and I'm a big Star Wars fan. I have a hard time seeing it having that kind of staying power for sure. So um, let me get, I need to fix something. Yeah, get rid of that. All right. Uh, next. More Star Wars. We got Star Wars, the High Republic Adventures. So we're moving into a little bit of buzz here. Uh, High Republic Adventures, number four. And this came today for me because um, I'm reading all these High Republic stuff, but I haven't read it yet. Um, this appears to be the B cover and not the A cover. Um, and it has, and it's jumped up to kind of match the A cover in terms of sales at 10 to 15 bucks. Supposedly there's like eight first appearances here. Okay. I'm a huge fan of the High Republic stuff. Huge fan. I've got the first series. I bought like multiple copies of a bunch of them. I was buying multiple covers um by the second series i kind of learned my lesson they just haven't held any kind of value even a book we're going to talk about in a few minutes the vernesta Rowe book like she's going to be coming to live action still doesn't really have any value um maybe if they do something really with these specific characters and kind of retelling these stories from the books maybe something happens to really sustain some value for some of these high republic characters but at this point I would just put them in a zombie bag. These books are basically running, like, after the fact, basically double cover kind of thing, 10 bucks. Um, Yeah, I just don't see any reason to chase them. I hope you guys are still out there. I haven't gotten a comment in, like, five minutes. Uh, I haven't. Originally, that was kind of my plan, as I was going to try to flip them. I thought maybe they would have some value at this stage they don't really have any so i haven't really flipped them but i have extra copies of a bunch of that particularly from the first phase one stuff uh the first volume of high republic and high republic adventures um but yeah and everything since then i've just been getting a copy of everything since then so uh hey Dwayne, what's going on? they are still here good <laughs> black knight what is happening i wondered if i made you see sick and scared you off Dwayne. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's like eight first appearances in here, but then they were saying some of them aren't truly the first because they've appeared previously, just not in cameo or whatever. So yeah, anyway, 10 to 15, which is not terrible, but I wouldn't be rushing out to try to track this down. Um, <laughs> it would be something long enough. It starts looking like you. Yeah, a little bit there. That was kind of... Uh, night burglar <laughs> so um all right keep moving here next uh a book my friend old wolf loves we got strange adventures 205 first appearance of dead man so james gunn put an ig post that had images of dead man so everybody's going to buy dead man um this is not this is not a cheap book at any point um 150 to 300 raw copies right now a 6.0 went for five, but then Tom had one saying Heritage had a 6.5 to one for 385. Um, 
but there were I didn't so that wasn't on my eBay sales, but I went back and looked, and there were two very recent six O sales on eBay that were basically right at five hundred. Um, a nine O went for three thousand. This is a book, big book. This is absolutely correct on Deep House long term. This is absolutely straight cash. So if you buy in right now and you're patient, like you're not going to lose anything. But I would guess, like. If you look at some of the um, other books that have come out with some of these DC announcements, there's been peaks when he says something, and then they kind of they kind of slowly regress back toward where they've been, and then something else will come out, and they'll kind of jump up again, and they'll slowly. So that's been kind of the pattern with all these DC books that James Gunn has kind of promoted. So I put this as an "I'll be back." Like I think three months from now, and we haven't gotten any news. Now, if we get casting, it'll jump a little higher. And then maybe I'm wrong there and it becomes worth it at this point. But I would think I would be patient and look for a deal on this book. Um, but saying all of that, all those caveats, so like I think you could probably do a little better when there's less speculation going on. This is a book that's going to be worth it long term. You're going to be fine. So I, maybe I should just call it worth it. But I have a feeling six months from now, you know what? I'm just going to change this to worth it. Yeah, it's probably just worth it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it straight cash in six months. I don't think you're going to make a ton, but I'm changing my prediction. I'm going with worth it. I've talked myself into it. <laughs> there you go. Because this is such a, this book has such value anyway. Uh, I mean, it's just, we're talking about the Silver Age, 1967. Yeah. You can see I'm all over the place. I'm out of practice. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Next, more DC stuff. We got Tales of the Teen Titans, number 44. You guys know I love this book. Uh, first Dick Grayson is Nightwing. Origin for Deathstroke. Origin for Jericho. Um, raw copies going for 75 right now. 9.8 going for 340. So this book, through, even through most of last year, was setting a little over 400 uh, for 9.8. Raw copies were setting right around this range. Uh, maybe like 60-ish on average kind of thing. To set 60 to 70 bucks with you know higher and lower sales depending on condition um and then it's slowly over the last six months been creeping backwards so this kind of bumps it back up not even to where it was a year ago or less than a year ago um but back up a little bit and this all has to do with we got an announcement of titans movies coming are going to be included in some of the new dc projects um my personal bias is this is probably worth it. This price is not that far from where it's been kind of over the last several years. Although it was like a month ago, you could do better on a 9.8 than you can right now. I still kind of put this as a worth it. Um, as opposed to, and yes, I have my personal bias here. So I'm going to take that word for what it is. But just like knowing... Because I own this book in a 9.8, I know what the value has been. So at 340, it's kind of in the mid range of what the value has been over the last few years. Like it's been basically a 250 to 450 kind of book. Um, like with heights getting up around 450, lows not really getting below 250. Uh, so I feel like at 340 for a 9.8 right now, worth it seems about right. So. Uh, despite my biases, <laughs> I do feel like there's logic there, and it's not just my biases. <laughs> uh, next, uh, more related to this Teen Titans announcement new Teen Titans number one. Uh, obviously, this is the start of the Perez Wolfman run. Uh, obviously, the character, there's no real first here. The characters all appear, the new characters, Starfire, Cyborg, Raven, all appear in DC Comics Presents 26. Um, but this is a classic book, people love this run, people love this book. Uh, $40 raw here, $250 to $330 for 9.8 here. That's really not up. Um, that's about what this book sets at, generally speaking. Maybe you can find a little better deer typically, but um, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's always, the book always sells as soon as it comes in the shop. Yeah. Uh, New T Titans, number one, worth it. Yeah. I, so, I put all so that's three in a row that I've kind of put in this worth it category. I don't expect this book to jump a ton. If it does, if it jumps beyond it, like if it gets up to being like a nine point eight, you're going for like five six hundred bucks, and I would say come back later. Um, 
But this, again, that 250 to 330 to mid 200s to upper th to mid 300s is about where 9.8 on this book typically sets. So we're not really that far out of the range. So I would put this as worth it. Um, let's see. Next. Oh, we talked about this briefly earlier. Um, Star Wars The High Republic. First full appearance of Vanessa Rowe. Now she appears in two and four, but she doesn't like you see her in a panel, but she doesn't really like isn't really part of she's not really fully introduced, that kind of stuff. But she is in two and four, but this is considered her first full. And so I just talked about like what's going on with High Republic books. This is a character that is going to appear in the Acolyte show. Um, we know this, she's cast. You catch a glimpse of her, just a glimpse uh, in the trailer. Uh, I don't know that she's going to be a big part of the Act Like show, but she is going to be in it. Uh, so she's coming to live action, and raw copies are eight bucks. Uh, Nine point eight jumped back up to ninety from where it had been sitting at fifty. We've known she's going to be in the show for a while now. So if you hear me say I wouldn't go out and chase that other High Republic book, this is why. This is the first character from the High Republic that they're doing something else with, and their books aren't really worth anything. <laughs> so um, I mean. Yeah, and I love this character. I have multiple copies of this book. I would come back later. Uh, and honestly, on the 9.8, you're pro it's probably more than I'll be back. It's probably a trap. But uh, more of the sales are on the raw side. So, and that's just an I'll be back. Um, I mean, eight bucks, it's not really an even an I'll be back. Like, five to $10 is just where this book sits for raw copies all the time. The $90 is probably, it's just too high for a uh, 9.8. I don't see it sustaining that. Now, if the show comes out in a month and she plays a huge role and people fall in love with the character, then the book's probably going to jump. Uh, so from that standpoint, you might say it's worth it. But after the show disappears, I will tell you that I looked at the IBDM because I was just curious after the trailer came out. And she's technically only listed for one episode. So my guess is that's not what's going to happen. Now that could be off. They may not, they may not know that yet because they had a, there was only a couple of characters that were listed for more than one episode. Um, and they were listed for all eight. And most of the characters were just listed for one. Um, so that may be they just don't know. <laughs> like yet, the crediting hasn't isn't complete, or she's only gonna be a bit part. So we'll see. Um, but I I would be patient with this. <laughs> Damn time change. Dude, I like, so the time changed, and then I went to that conference where time just didn't really matter because I was throwing up because I was running the meeting and I was up early and I wasn't sleeping good because I was in a hotel. So I never really, I came back here. I've been back for over a week. This has been the hardest. Like I have struggled to adjust to the time change after I came back, even though I was in the same time zone. When I was at the conference, I never left Central Time, <laughs> but like it is just not being home that first week has just effed with me, and it's been a struggle. I don't know what the heck the deal is. <laughs> like I am struggling to get my butt up in the mornings for sure. So anyway, um, next we got Spider Man Noir. So Nicholas Cage was being interviewed, and he's like, "What to do? They're doing a lot of action, basically," and which. I feel like he's a little old to be Spider-Man to our live action. Whatever. Um, so anyway, this is hitting the list again. Raw copies 180, 9.8, 440. And I'll be honest, this book is, this is not really that up. Um, well, maybe it is over recent sales. I don't know for sure. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Um, I don't know 100%. Last time, the last few times I've looked at this, if anything, the book is still down a little bit from when I had looked at it like previously and a few times. It's not a book I necessarily chase and follow very closely, but I've looked at it enough. Um, I don't think this book is going to be much. I don't think you're that bad. This is another. This, I got a lot of worth this this week. I don't. This is like what my one, two, three, fourth worth it. Now, that'll change here in a minute. But um, yeah, this book has had this kind of value. In this range, basically since the first Cross the Spider-Verse movie, and 
I mean, it varies some. You can occasionally find a deal if you want to call it and I'll be back, but you're not going to find a lot better deal than what it's going for now. There you go. No, he's talking about there's there's supposedly a live action Amazon project coming for this. And he's saying that, that it's supposedly it's been rumored for a while and he basically kind of confirmed it in that interview. Um, not completely, but mostly. All right, next. Book I love. We got NYX number three, first appearance of Laura Kinney. Oh, I can't spell. My typing was terrible when I was making the list today. Good grief. Laura Kinney. I didn't get the uh. And yeah, and then I spelled Kinney wrong. <laughs> yeah, my typing was terrible when I was putting this together yes, last night or this morning. Um, 450 right now for raw copies, which is basically where this book sits. 9.8, 14.50, and this is all based on she's supposedly going to appear in Deadpool, and we're getting a new NYX series as part of their new X-Men relaunch. They they had it listed as one of the series that's coming. Uh, so that's the kind of the two reasons for renewed interest. This has been setting, like, historically, ever since Logan, this had been $15 to $2,000 book in a 9.8 um, but it has slowly been creeping down over the last year. Recently, it's been setting like nine to twelve hundred. Like you could find deals occasionally for under a thousand, um, but most of the time it was a thousand to twelve hundred. So this is a slight bump back up in value. Now, raw copies four fifty, like a really nice raw copy. That's yeah, you were paying that still. Um, so it's bumped back up to fourteen fifty. I'm trying to decide what is really the floor. What is the, I think long-term, I think at the very least, this is worth it. Um, I really think long-term is straight cash, but at the very least over the next couple of years, it's probably worth it. Is it worth it over the next six months? If she appears, I would guess it bumps back up to like an 18 and then it becomes a, you know, and then maybe it drifts back down to this, maybe 12 to 1500, which is kind of where it's really at right now. Um, so I feel like I got to justify this because I don't normally do this, but I have it as another worth it, um, at these current prices because it's not that far off of where it just normally sits. It's a little bit of a bump, bump back. Um, so yeah, almost snagged the same X series, uh, on Saturday. I had to pass on three and four. Yeah, three and four are the big ones. I don't have four, I should get four at some point, but I don't have four. Um, I only have three. I haven't. I've never read this. No, that's not true. I've read this series digitally. Excuse me. Um, I was gonna say I've never read it, but yeah, I did that. Like last year, I went out of my way to read it digitally. But um, so, but anyway, yeah. Duh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're gonna keep moving. Um, next, the yo-yo book of all yo-yo books. <laughs> this is even worse than uh, Young Avengers. Um. Nova number one back on the list for Spirit to Richard Ryder. Rumors now that the, instead of a movie, we're going to get a Disney Plus Nova show, even though they're supposedly cutting back on the number of Disney Plus shows they're doing. Um, but here's the thing how the mighty have fallen 25 to 70. I looked it up 25 to 75 for raw copies. 9.6 is 3 to 325. There's no recent 9.8 sales from the last couple weeks to like put on here. And obviously, there's there was more rumors that this is going to happen. So if it's not in the last couple of weeks, it's not related to the rumors. This book is so far down from some of the heights it's reached over the years. Um, but I'm still putting this, and I'll be back. I think I at this point, I don't believe this is going to happen. And and I stand by the, the other thing is, if it does happen, I doubt it's. I, I can't imagine Richard Ryder is going to be. The Disney's gonna make a show with a main character called Richard Ryder. I just don't believe they're gonna be like, hey kids, come watch Dick Ryder, Nova. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do it. It's gonna be Sam Alexander. Right? We all know this. <laughs> so that's just yeah. <laughs> come on. We all know where this is going. <laughs> and it's not to this book. This book is oh, has been a trap from day one. At this point, it's lower and it's dropped back enough that I would just call it an I'll be back. But, um, but yeah, 
we all know where this is going. <laughs> it's not going to this guy. Uh, if it ever happens at all. All right, next, we got four books left. They are all related to the hot thing of the moment, which is X-Men 97 uh, that dropped. Uh, <laughs> rated R. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, because Marvel and Disney are both great about wanting to do rated R stuff. <laughs> um, so it's all about X Men '97. We got. I still haven't watched the second episode. I was gonna. I didn't get to it today um, or yesterday, and then obviously today I work and everything. I didn't get to it. Um, first up, we have first appearance of Madeline Pryor. Clearly, I hadn't paid attention to these lists yet when I was speaking. So clearly, that is sort of where they're going. In some way, because I was like, because Jean in the first episode was talking about being pregnant and with her son. And I'm like, wait, what are they going to retro con that? Or are we going to get like Jean's been missing and got replaced? And that's how they're going to bring Madeline into this. What are they doing here? So that was just me talking without knowing. But apparently, yeah, there's some spoilers for episode two that I guess we are getting hints. Sinister is coming in. So we're getting hints at Madeline Pryor. Or maybe she flat out appears. I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't watched it yet. Or probably will before the season is over. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the exception, not the rule. <laughs> they only did that because Ryan Reynolds made a ton of money twice. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can make a ton of money. So we're going to let him play. But they're not going to do that often. But anyway, first appearance of Madeline Pryor, 20 to 30 bucks, 9.8240. Uh, this is like a 5 to $10, $15 book at the most, typically. Um, 9.8, what, I think it said what they were going for, like, um, no, that was a different one, but 9.8 usually are under 200. Micah, like, as much as everybody loves X-Men 97, I don't imagine it's going to fundamentally change the baseline of these books long term. So all this is for sure, and I'll be, uh, this is for sure a trap at 240. Like, this is probably, Madeline is not a character that's been able to sustain value. Like, this kind of value, even though this is not that much at 20 to 30 and 240. Um, my guess is it's a $150, 9.8 again, or maybe a 150 to 200, both of which still makes it a trap. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you're paying 240, I think you're paying the height of where this book is going to be because whatever they do, Madeline is probably not going to be toward the top of any kind of there's so many stories, even though they've done a bunch of X-Men stories, I can't imagine them doing anything with Madeline, really, in a movie, so. I will say, like, I never really cared that much about it, even in the, like, I enjoyed it in the 90s, but it was not my favorite. I will say, first episode, Deep House, was really, really good. So, I will say it's worth checking out. It's even somebody who's not, like, a huge nostalgia person for X-Men the X-Men cartoon, it was a distant third for me of the Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men kind of trilogy of cartoons that were coming out at that time. Superman kind of came a little later. Justice League was a little later. But of, of those three, X-Men was third for me, always was. But I really did enjoy that first episode. Uh, Scott never valued any of the women he was with, Gore. That's part of the reason he sucks. And, you, and don't, like, don't, yeah, he treats Gene and Emma just as bad. <laughs> he really does. So, you know, we'll make everybody mad, but it's the truth. <laughs> everybody, like, gets on me because I don't like Scott, but there's reasons. He's earned them. <laughs> so, all right, next. Trial of Magneto. 15 to 20 bucks. 9.8160 because the second episode apparently is this issue, which I have not watched yet. Uh, this is issue 200 or an adaptation of this issue. Uh, this was a $60, 9.8. A story storylines never hold. Let's be real. Storylines never hold. And this is a storyline, not just not for a movie, not for for one episode of one cart of a cartoon series. And I get everybody's loving this. Casing this book right now at over a hundred dollars for 9.8. It's a dumpster fire. It's first of all, it's now if you want the book because it's a great book and you want to read it, then get a copy and read it a year from now, <laughs> or read it digitally and then 
get a copy a year from now. Don't pay these prices. Come on. Like, there's there's no first here. There's no key here. It's just a good story. It's being adapted into adapted into a cartoon episode. A single episode from like a 20 episode season. I don't know how many episodes there are, but there's a bunch. There's more than 10. I know that. But um, come on. Dump store buyer to be paying these kind of prices for this book. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, keep going on the X-Men train. Here we go. Sinister, uh, I believe, was also hinted at it at the end of thing. Yeah. Like I said, it's a great book, but it's not a valuable book. Wait till it returns to what its actual value is. <laughs> there you go. And then read it. Uh, next, X-Men 221, First Appearance of Sinister. I believe he was also, he was hinted at, and again, I just got to watch it, but I I know enough spoilers to know that he's hinted at, at the end of episode two. And we've known for all a long time that he was going to be a part of the season. Uh, 25 to 75 raw right now. 9.8 to 275 to 300. New stand 9.8, 850 to 900, which is, whew. Um, and... This is another book, much like that Nova book or whatever, that's been on the list numerous times. And it really hasn't fundamentally changed the value of the book. It bumps up, it bumps down. It bumps up, it bumps down. It bumps up. Something happens, people pay a little more, and then it goes back to what its fundamental underlying value is, and then it bumps back up, and then it goes back. And that's what's going to happen here. Uh, we get away from the show. Um, and it's an I'll be back. Sinister is a great villain. It's a good book. But there's no reason to pay premiums when you don't have to. It's not like it's a hard to find book. Um, yeah, just come back when nobody's talking about him. Um I, I know it's been like literally I haven't watched I haven't went back. I thought about rewatching some of it. I never did. And so I haven't watched it since it was coming out. <laughs> like literally. I don't believe he ever actually appeared, but I could be wrong. Um, but I know he's supposed to appear this season, so that's when my registration is. And then last is X-Men Adventures. Oh, I got a really... I downloaded a really bad picture. I either I got a... I didn't wait for it to... I have to fix that <laughs> before we come back around, because that picture is terrible. That is out of focus. That is not a good image. I don't know where I, where I got that one from, but I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> um, so I apologize. If you're looking at it like, oh, that's out of focus. That's because it's not a good image. I need to replace that. Um, so, yeah, obviously hitting the list because the show is finally releasing. Raw copies are sitting around 18, 9.8245, and this, the show is finally here. This is what I'm going to tell you. And this is not as high as the book has been a couple other times when it's hit the list and people were like, oh, we're getting the show. We're getting the revival. All that kind of stuff. The show is actually here and it's not worth as much as it was during some of those initial announcements. Um, not, it's not a lot lower, but a little bit. And do we think it's going to continue to hold once the season ends? Come on. I mean, really? Have we not been paying attention to what happens to these books after the show comes and goes for any kind of Marvel project for the last decade? I mean, I it's an I'll be back on the raw side. It's a trap on the 9.8 side. Yeah. There you go. Hopefully you got it for a good deal. Newsstand would be, yeah, a newsie is going to have significantly more value than uh, a, oh, I got to get back on that, get Akbar off there. It's going to have significantly more value than uh, the other, but yeah, it's a great cover. It's a fun book, and if you have nostalgia for this, I don't begrudge anybody for wanting the book or owning the book or trying to go get it. Don't go get it right now. <laughs> go get it. Six months from now, when the show is come and gone and people forgot about it for three months. Uh, yeah. 
Hey, I had more worth it tonight than normal. Just for the record. I actually had some positivity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kingdom of Nerds just in here for the end of the show, but thank you for stopping by <laughs> as we just got through the last of our books. Oh, and yeah. So that's this week's list. We went for 40 minutes. Uh, I appreciate you guys for coming back. Uh, tonight was worth the wait. I apologize that life and work and yeah, the fact that this is my hobby and not my gig kept me from doing this for the 30 or 40 bucks to get a month for doing this from YouTube. Um, doesn't pay the bills. So so apologize that I there were no cash address for the last month. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we'll get back on schedule. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, um, I'll be back tomorrow, I think, for an unboxing on, uh, well, hopefully the guy, I was here and somehow I missed the mailman today because I got a sign for a book. But um, one of my 2024 hunt list books, I should just go be able to go by the post office to pick it up tomorrow, hopefully. So that should be a box tomorrow night. And then Wednesday night uh, with my friends, Greg, the Bearded Comic Bro, and Unruly Simeon, we're going to be uh, kicking off our read of Black Science. So if you have any interest in that series, come join us one day, Wednesday. So there should be more content coming, given the last three weeks has been almost done. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, let's see. Good night, all. Yeah. And happy Easter. Yes, everyone have a wonderful Easter. And yeah, we will. Catch you next time. Later.